Rock and roll, sir. Well, Kirsten, Kirsten is all yours for the next 20 minutes. Hard out at 19. Hi. How are you doing today? Hi, I am good. How are you doing? Well, I bet you you have been busy for the past, what, almost week now? Well, to be completely honest, I actually don't cover banking anymore. I actually cover tech companies like Facebook and Google. So I'm actually just reliving my experience covering the financial crisis more than anything. (laughs) Well, even with you covering Facebook and Google, I mean, look at what's been going on in the tech world over the past six months. Oh, I know. A hundred percent. Yes. Wow. it's been crazy for sure. When you when you relive it the way that you did, because you put your book together, The Lost Bank, when you're seeing this all over again, I mean, do you feel like that you 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 know you the sky is falling, the sky is falling? I it's funny, I don't feel like the sky is falling, but I also am just so surprised that everything we learned back then we clearly forgot in the ensuing like decade and a half. It's just people asking me about what are FDIC insurance limits? It's just that's really bringing it all back. Well, it, yeah, it shocks me that, you know, that with, with the bank in, in Silicon Valley, that, you know, the people that had over $250,000 are going, they, they didn't know that they were only guaranteed the $250,000? That's that's really surprising to me. But on the other hand, you know, no one during the financial crisis knew either. And it was only when they went on this sort of campaign to let people know that finally everyone understood what that was. And back then, actually, the insurance limit was only like a hundred thousand. They increased that's it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that 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 bank right there in Silicon Valley really kind of affects your world as well with you working with tech companies, because that right there is the heart and soul of tech. Absolutely. I mean, that's where everyone here, you know, from startups to tech companies to venture capitalists, they all were banking there. It's like the local bank here. So how do I guess where I'm lost is because I think our government is lost, too. So therefore, it just trickles down to regular people like myself, because we're trying to hit every single angle here. And over the weekend, I I just kept reading those headlines and I almost feel like my financial advisory says, don't read the paper. (laughs) <laughs> and there again reminds me so much of the financial crisis because that's what everyone was advising then too the headlines are definitely scary for sure and we were actually just talking about credit suisse and yep. you know to use kind of a politically charged word the bailout they got over the weekend from the swiss government um that in particular is one of concern because it's much much bigger than a bank like silicon valley bank yeah. the in talking with real people as well as you know reading the papers the one thing that people are keep asking is why is it that these these ceos or the, or the decision makers why aren't they paying the price are we in that same kind of a situation again i think that uh, it seems definitely from the outset like we are i can see why people think that now i think that there is a movement to change that again you saw biden pushing for stricter laws against bankers it does seem every time that this happens it's sort of like where are the ceos right <laughs> <laughs> um I, and i think everyone is sort of hopeful that this time around they're going to figure out first of all investigate of course and then figure out what happened and how the people responsible can really you know pay the price this time for you know, sure but you know what my fear is kirsten is that i fear that they invested their money in cryptocurrency that i keep waiting for someone to step out saying all right so the bank messed up they they went with crypto i mean nfl players and nba players are doing it oh what the heck i i know i don't know too much about that but crypto i mean was interwoven in all of this just because so many of the banks had crypto customers at this point Mm -hmm. some of them and that's obviously a very unstable corner of the financial markets for sure wow one of the things that scares me the most out of all of this and i think it's because i really try to be with the everyday person is that everybody is doing their banking on their stupid smartphone i mean it's like before they make a purchase they go to the so-called website so they can transfer so much money i'm so afraid those are the banks that are going to get hit with the worst 
Well, it's interesting. I mean, even the largest banks like Wells Fargo or Bank of America, you know, they have everything on the app. Mm -hmm. I am still kind of old school. I will go to the ATM sometimes. That's me. That's me. (laughs) (laughs) But, But like, here's the funny thing during, well, not very funny, but during the bank run of Silicon Valley Bank, it actually was not easy to see because so much was happening on the app during the financial crisis you saw much more people actually physically going to banks and lining up and and you kind of saw the panic in a way that you didn't this time because it was on an app wow so what are the what are the rumors about about you know the employees getting a hefty little paycheck before everything fell apart I don't know too much about that, to be honest, but, you know, in all of these situations, that is all going to be investigated. And, you know, what Biden was pushing for was clawbacks, right, of pay to some executives if it is found that they were responsible for this. And for, for example, with Silicon Valley Bank, it's a little bit hard to see how leadership wouldn't have seen some of this coming with interest rates rising. That was their main issue. They, you know, were in this environment where they were getting just tons of cash all the time from their customers and then suddenly that reversed well it wasn't just out of nowhere right the fed was signaling they were going to raise rates for a while so yeah. that sort of thing i'm sure is what banking regulators are going to be looking at so the actions of jp morgan and wells fargo helping out the the bank in san francisco uh, this past friday that to me was a reminder of how teamwork works because back in 2008 when the banks came together i had never seen anything like that before so I wasn't shocked to see, you know, uh, J.P. Morgan as well as Wells Fargo team up. That's right. So that, again, was just eerily similar to the financial crisis. Now, the reason they have to do that is not because they want to necessarily save one particular bank, although in this case, yes, that was that was the outcome. It's just that they know from the financial crisis that once this contagion hits, it's almost like a laser that's going to land on the next weakest bank. And they have to control it, right? Because if they don't, that's when you get this cascading effect of fear where customers are just looking at any bank and starting to pull money. And that's what they're trying to really stop there. What did you learn in creating the lost bank in the way where the, 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 the person that goes to the ATM window is is affected by that? Do you, where, where does the fear begin, inside the bank or outside in the car? It You know, during the financial crisis, and we actually wrote a story about this at the Wall Street Journal, it was a lot different where the fear started because we really didn't have social media back right, then. I mean, right. there was Facebook, there was Twitter, but no one was really using them the way we use them now. And I just was so struck by this time around how you could get on Twitter and there were really big name investors and then just kind of random people just shouting, get your money out of the bank or like, you know, the the financial institution is collapsing or just these really like fear mongering headlines that you really didn't have that as much at the time. It was much more tightly controlled, the message. And so I think back in 2008, it was much more sort of word of mouth or what you were reading literally in the newspaper or seeing on CNN. <laughs> I, I, I sit here and listen to these stories and I think of the, the people in, in the Federal Reserve going, oh, my God, how much more can we take? I mean, because they are just getting the hell beat out of them. <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, this is not the week to be a banking regulator. That's for sure. I mean, banks have been boring for so long. I mean, it's just all our banking reporters, even at the Wall Street Journal, we have this amazing, massive team of them. They've most of them never gone through this because it's been cycled out since 2008. And, you know, I think there's probably a lot of new banking regulators, too, that have never gone through this. So it's really interesting. My heart goes out to the employees of the banks, all the way down to the person sitting at the ATM window. And I also have a big heart for how this is going to affect the world of housing, because there are some innocent people that made a choice to become realtors. And now their world could be shaken. 
Absolutely. I always feel the worst for the little guy in this. And obviously realtors are right in there. Um, I always remember the story that someone told me when I was reporting Washington Mutual's failure, which is during one of the big bank runs when everyone was panicking, this bank customer took a cake to her teller at the Washington Mutual branch. And it just sort of showed how everyone kind of also was worried about those lower level employees who had nothing to do with this or you know the, the businesses that rely on this ecosystem that also in this case really had nothing to do with it. Well, yeah, because look, look at the bank in, in, in Silicon Valley in, in the way that so many startup companies were getting money from that bank. It, it, it's interesting because startups are such a strange business. It took me a little while to wrap my head around this when I moved to the area, but they often are not posting profits in a way that a normal business would right away. And so there's inherently more risk in taking on that kind of banking customer, right? And so really regulators should have been looking much more closely at Silicon Valley Bank. You know, much earlier, most of their deposits were uninsured, which when I read that figure, I was sort of like, what? I mean, after the financial crisis, I didn't even think that was possible to have an institution like that. So it's it's definitely a tricky situation. It's, it's almost like somebody fell asleep. Was it the regulator or was it the banker? Who, who, who fell asleep on this one? It could have been both, to be honest. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's going to it's gonna come out in the ensuing weeks, but you can see how we were all lulled into this sense of, oh, we just went through this giant financial crisis, and then the ensuing years were, like I said before, honestly boring. Nothing was happening. <laughs> you know, we were in this period of insane growth in Silicon Valley, you see how this is tied to all the big tech companies hiring, hiring, hiring. They're putting tons of money at Silicon Valley Bank and other banks. And so it was just this boom period. I wish the average person knew how much of that behind the scenes money transferring actually took place. I think that if we understood the banking industry as a business and not just a place to plant our money, I, I swear we, we would all grow stronger as a community. I completely agree. It's just, it's a very confusing thing to wrap your head around. I mean, uh, as someone who spent like many, you know, months and years researching the banking system, and I feel like, you know, I don't have any sort of special degree for that. It's confusing. And it's very confusing. And when you start getting these headlines, and you don't understand the system, then it's just downright scary because you're seeing these headlines and you're like, what is going to happen? <laughs> is my money safe? Like, is my bank next? That sort of thing. And that's the kind of fearful thinking that just starts taking place during a time like this. Yeah, How many people have you talked to that said that they want to put the money underneath the mattress? And I'm looking at them going, do not do that. There's so many home break-ins now. People know that if you're moving your money. Oh my gosh, I know. I would just never do that. Yeah. Um, it's funny because you saw this, what, like only two years ago during the pandemic, when the pandemic first yeah, started and the yeah. stock market was dropping and everyone wanted to pull their money out. And it's just, you it, you have to trust the system at a time like this, but it's, again, very hard to do if you don't really understand the system. That's, you know, you sound just like my financial advisor because, you know, when this thing started <laughs> happening, I mean, and, and all the way through, all the way back to 2008, I have loved this guy from the very beginning. And, and when he would say that, you've got to trust it. You've got to trust it. If you have questions, I'll, I'll help you find answers, but do not react right now. Do not. It's reacting just becomes this cascading effect that makes the entire situation worse. Yeah. And it's hard to see that, but truly regulators are not going to let a situation happen like the financial crisis if they can avoid it, right? Of course, uh, I'm not saying something like that could never happen, but the system is set up 
for us all to be protected. And let's be honest, like there are not that many normal people that have to worry about a $250,000 FDIC (laughs) insurance limit, right? (laughs) We're talking about, you know, that was really a problem for business customers and other, you know, high net worth individuals. So if you have less than 250K in the bank, you're, you have nothing to worry about. (laughs) I, I feel for the state of California. I mean, it seems like if it's not the fires, it's the wind, now it's the banking it's like oh my god you know everything seems to be pushing people out of california i know you know i was just watching over the weekend that movie from a little while ago with john cusack 2012 where california just like sinks into the ocean and i'm just like (laughs) if this is a metaphor or what i don't know what is but it's it's been rough out here with all the tech layoffs so many of them um and now silicon valley bank it's it's been rough for sure i know that you're really busy with the tech world but here's the thing don't you think that the lost bank is screaming for a follow-up because I mean, right, you're in the beginning pages of that second book. I completely think so. I just honestly can't believe this is happening again, especially the bank run part of it. I sort of thought we're never going to see that again. They've taken care of it. They've raised the deposit insurance limit. People are informed now, but apparently that's not the case. So it's it's pretty shocking. Do you think we should be in fear? Because you know what happened to the, the housing industry back in 2008 where everything just basically stopped. I mean, Charlotte is a growing city. There's building all over the place. I don't want to walk through a ghost town. I, you know, it's easy for me to say, because again, I'm a pretty well-researched person just because of my profession, but I just think this is not the time to be fearful. Right. Um, I think, of course, growth is going to slow. We're in a slow down growth mode just everywhere, but there's cycles like that, right? And so it's just a matter of kind of wading through that cycle. I, I just don't really believe in buying into that fear mentality. But you're going to think I'm a freak here, Kirsten, in the way that when I when it comes to bad news, because we're all glued to it, I would rather think about what's going on with the banking industry right now than, than to think about uh, the gentleman that's in North Korea that's get, preparing his army for a nuclear war or what's going on in Russia today with the leader of China and Russia getting together. I would rather fear my, my financial world here than have to deal with those. Well, it's easier to wrap you know, your head around in a way, that's for sure. And it's a, I don't want to say smaller problem, but <laughs> maybe. So I think you might have to ask your therapist about that yeah. one. Though. <laughs> I, I want to go back a couple years when the only thing we were worried about was that little helicopter up there on Mars. Was it going to work or not? And we were all going, oh my God, here we go. <laughs> Right. It's just interesting how these cycles go. And remember, it was only three years ago that we thought, you know, that it was the start of the pandemic. And now here we are worrying about the financial system. So, again, these things are just cyclical. Now, because we have experienced so much in the past 20 years, being a journalist and being real with your words, do you think that we have the qualifications of being the second greatest generation? I think we do. You know, that's a really good question. Um, I I feel like we've handled these situations pretty well, but that's a good. I I, I feel like we brought a lot to the table. <laughs> Absolutely. So, where can people go to find out more about you? Because I mean, we cannot lose our our interest in what's going on in the tech world because it's happening. I mean, I mean, even Facebook is coming under attack again. Didn't they just fire a bunch of people? You know, I mean. I don't mean to talk my own book here literally, but like the Washington Mutual story from the financial crisis is so eerily similar to what is happening now in a way that if you kind of want to see what happened back then with the largest bank failure in U.S. history and how regulators reacted in all of this, um, I definitely recommend reading The Lost Bank. And again, sorry for the shameless plug. No, I want you to. like. (laughs) <laughs> truly like it is it is so similar it's scary um and then you know i just always recommend to people like keep up with the news but don't like you know don't be glued to it mm-hmm. because we're in a cycle where the headlines are definitely going to be scary for sure yeah. and it's just important to parse through that I, I want listeners to get the book i want them to read the book but i also want them to have a yellow highlighter in their hand so they can compare the notes and really <laughs> and so they can go back to it when something like this happens again in 12 to 15 years 
Yeah, and I, I really can't believe it's happening again this way. It's really <laughs> surprising. <laughs> you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. Will you be brilliant today, okay? Okay, I will. You too.